What if your AI assistant didn't just answer your questions, but saw what you were pointing at, understood your tone of voice, and even reacted to the emotion in your face? That is not science fiction. What it is, is multimodal AI, and it's going to redefine everything we think AI can do. You see, today's AI can do a lot. Summarize documents, generate images, answer emails, but here's the catch. Most AI is still locked into one mode at one time. Text in, text out. Image in, caption out. Voice in, transcript out. You get the point. It's kind of like teaching someone to read, but not letting them talk. This is where multimodal AI comes in and why it is such a big deal. Models that can process and combine multiple types of input, such as text, images, audio, video, even touch. This is a leap from something like Siri to something that actually gets the world around you, understands it, kind of understands it. But first, what is multimodal AI? When you think of multimodal AI, it refers to systems that understand and generate multiple forms of media, not just words, but images, sounds, and even physical sensations. Okay, let's go through a quick example. OpenAI's GPT-4 with vision. GPT-4V can look at a photo of, say, a chart and explain it in words, or describe what's going wrong in the picture of a broken machine. Another example would be Google's Gemini 1.5. So it can take something like 1500 page PDF, a diagram and a video and combine it into one insight. It understands all of them. Okay, but technically here is how it works. These models use a shared embedding space, a kind of common, language for images, words, and audio. That is what lets them compare a sentence to a sound or a photo to say a prompt. But why now? Why are we talking about multimodal AI so much now? Like what have the advancements been that make it exploding really now? Well, first is compute power. Nvidia's H100 GPU is a transformer beast as an example. I mean, it's up to four times faster than its predecessor for AI training. It's going so quickly. Second is model architecture. Transformers were built for text, but now we have vision transformers. And third, we have massive multimodal data sets. Things such as YouTube's audio set, which is over 2 million labeled audio clips. I mean, the amount of data we have access to really allows us to expand. And all of this though is the foundation. But what the real magic is, that is where multimodal AI is starting to do in the wild. Which brings me to how is it exactly being used today? Let's dive into some examples. One that's transforming accessibility and I find really interesting is the way we are driving today. So let's talk about GPT-4V and Be My Eyes. Be My Eyes started as a way to help blind users by connecting them to sighted volunteers. But then in 2023, they integrated GPT-4 with vision and it really changed everything. So listen to this. Now a blind user can snap a photo of anything, say a product label, a receipt, a street sign, and the AI replies, not just with the object, but with context. So here's a really good example of this. This is a 16 ounce plastic bottle of method hand soap, lavender scent, and the pump is intact and it looks about 80% full. It's not just seeing the object, it's actually understanding the situation at hand and it's changing people's lives. Even better, it can answer follow-up questions such as what's the expiration date or is there a QR code I can scan? How much does it cost? This is AI that sees like a human does and explains to you like a friend. And that's really the power of multimodal AI text and vision, not just on their own, but rather combined, making an accessible tool, tools that genuinely understand the world, which is pretty wild, even in that example I gave. Another one is Tesla's FSD and multimodal driving. So listen to this, going back to the driving. Tesla's full self-driving stack is, in my opinion, one of the best examples uh, of multimodals on wheels. It uses eight cameras to simulate 360 degree vision, radar and ultrasonic sensors to detect depth, GPS, high definition maps to understand space. But here's the thing, it goes further. You can talk to the system, say, take me to a coffee shop with a charging station and outdoor seating, and it gets it and it will do it. This isn't just pathfinding, what it is doing is it is combining vision, 
language and context in real time. Now the model doesn't just see traffic signs, it predicts pedestrian movement understands construction zones, adjusts behavior based on voice commands, and the list goes on. So when you take a step back and really think about it, it's not just self-driving, it's self-reasoning. And this level of multimodal perception is what powers every serious AV system today, from Waymo, Cruise, and beyond. So, okay, now we understand what it is, some real-world examples, but what does it really unlock at the core? One is context awareness. Ask yourself, what's wrong with this? Well, say you're pointing your phone at a leak. AI understands what this is. Another is human-like interaction. AI picks up your motion in your voice. It understands gestures, detects confusion on your face, and will slow down based on that. And three, we have to mention agentic AI. Robots that can see, hear, reason, and act kind of on their own. Whether it's fixing a car, assisting a surgeon, or anything else really. It has such a critical and big impact on our world. But of course there are limitations. I mean, for one, bias in image text data sets can be worse than text alone when you think about it. Alignment is harder. How do you even evaluate if the model got a video understanding wrong? Not to mention security risks when you think about it. What if someone embeds malicious prompts in a QR code or a spectrogram? What are the consequences of that? At the end of the day, multimodal systems are powerful, but also fragile in new ways. And we really need new safety and new tools to keep up with that. But here's where it gets even more wild. Effective computing is the next big thing. So what does that mean? It means emotion aware AI, such as facial expressions, heart rate, tone of voice, even muscle signals. For example, Meta is working on EMG wristbands, which is an AI that detects neural intent from subtle wrist movement. And I actually got to try out their Orion glasses that had a wristband like this, and it was kind of mind blowing. Another one is MIT. They are building AI tutors that adapt in real time, and they can tell how frustrated you are. Now, Stanford also just developed tactile sensors for robots that let them identify objects by feel, not just by sight. So, yes. AI might soon recognize what you're holding based on how it feels in its fingers, which is really hard to wrap your head around, especially how quickly everything is moving. I mean, the future really of AI isn't just smarter, it's more sensory, which I'm very excited about. We're not just building chatbots anymore, we're building collaborators. AI that sees what we see, hears what we hear, and maybe one day feels what we feel. We're not just teaching machines to think, we're teaching them to perceive the world and that changes everything. All right, I hope you enjoyed going through this video on what is multimodal AI and why it is such a big deal. I'm very passionate about it because it really does unlock this next big step and journey for what is possible with AI and possible for our future and where we are headed. So it's very key, very crucial to understand. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can continue to stay ahead of tech, understand what is going on in AI, and hopefully take something away from every one of these videos where you feel like you learned something really interesting that you can bring into your workplace, your school, or just conversations you have, whether it be at a party or with other friends. Leave in the comments what other topics you want me to cover. I'll see you soon.